going to try to clear everything out for you and, and wow. see, you know, and, and maybe, you know, with the explanations that we're going to give you today, tomorrow, Facebook is going to go into something and come up with something new as well. So they're constantly changing. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good deal. Welcome, Adam, Cindy, Samantha. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are going to record this, and if you've been invited um, on this screen today, um, you're here for a reason. You were either nominated by your, a team member or um, someone with the coaching company thought you'd have really good input and good questions. So please um, don't be shy. Um, keep yourself on mute. We know all that if, if you're not asking a question, but please engage. Um, Kate and Armando are super talented and um, if we can't get it answered here on the call uh, we'll make sure that we can find an answer and get it back to you okay cool all right so let's kick this off um, I'm going to screen share a little bit what we're gonna do are we good yes. yeah all right so best social media practices and there's two lanes here that that we've identified or we see that's pretty obvious that we can use social media for. Uh, one being the marketing and the branding of the company, you, either the agent or your team. And then the other is lead generation. So there's two levers you can pull and two big focuses um, and how we use social media. And these two are powerhouses at doing it. So uh, Armando, if you wanna tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Oh yeah, so first of all, it's, it's great to be here and being able to share everything that I've been through and I, you know, all the places I've worked with. Uh, born and raised in Brazil, as you guys can, can read in the, in the slide. Uh, I came here, it was 2012, so I went to school. I was down in Brazil, they found me. I had a background, I have a background on, with uh, soccer and that, that's why they, you know, decided to give me a scholarship to come here. And I, I always loved the idea of, uh, uh, you know, being involved with businesses and doing something for, you know, related to businesses. So yeah, I ended up with a, a business administration degree and in international business. And uh, since then, since graduating, I started working with, you know, several different places and all related to online marketing, basically. And, uh, and yeah, so right now I'm currently working with, uh, let's see, three, four different companies right now. I'm saying three, four, because I'm about to close a contract with a gaming company right now. So, and again, everything with them will be related to social media marketing, online marketing, and some other ideas related to marketing as well. And uh, just, just in case, if you guys do not understand what I say, sometimes my accent gets super, super thick. Please, please, please let me know. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for that. Kate? Yep. All righty, can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Sweet. Sorry about that. Well, my name's Kate. I joined the Josh Cooley team about nine months ago as their marketing coordinator. Um, since then, I've worked very closely with advertising listings, advertising the new subdivision here in Eugene. Before that, I was a marketing manager in the boat industry on the coast of Oregon. So best of both worlds, really. And now I got my real estate license and just mixing the two. Very good. Good deal. All right. I want to go to the next, next slide. Go. So what we have here is basically an outline for what you want to stick to for your key points. And I think Armando had some good tidbits on basically being consistent and then creating your brand. Oops. There we go. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. 
So basically why you want to keep your brand awareness open is because your brand awareness is going to be setting your culture and showing your clients who you are and what you do and why they want to trust you to work with you. If you look someone up and they don't have just anything on their social media, it's kind of a little questionable. So really setting your Facebook to match and be aesthetically pleasing is a good tip. Yes, yes, and also in terms of uh, uh, the consistency, it's basically so we can so we can go against the algorithm. Now, every single platform they have each individual algorithm, and they're basically looking for you know posting consistently and using all the little features that they have as well, with you know posting content on the on the page, posting content on stories, replying to all DMs, engaging on on you know. Pages, they are the same niches that, that you do your, your social media marketing as well. And, and uh, the idea of being consistent daily uh, is literally so you can always rank. The same, same idea with Google. Google, you have, you know, you pay, you know, Google AdWords so you can rank a little bit higher, but you can do that through uh, SEO marketing, right? Search engine optimization. Uh, with social media, the more consistent you are, replying to DMs, replying to comments, going to different niches and going to uh, the comments and trying to uh, uh, create a relationship with them. That's how, how things are going to improve for you. That's basically talking about organically, trying to grow your brand, grow your, your page organically. And then we have the, the ads as well that could help with, with you know, maintaining that consistency as well. But that would be more specific related to you know, what, what kind of ad you're trying to look for uh you know lead generation impressions or you know store uh, uh, traffic all of that kind of stuff so it's literally to fight to fight against the the algorithm of every single platform and touching on the facebook ads because that's kind of why we wanted to share this with you guys today is Facebook ads, their leads, if you do the lead generation forms, they're a lot more cheaper than the Google ads that I've noticed. On the team here, I think our average Google is 340 and then nationally it's about $5. So with our Facebook leads right now and targeting the demographic that we'd like to target, we are about at 160. So it's a really good tool to use if you're not using it and just bringing awareness to using it and how to use it. So Kate, when you're talking about one, $1.60 per lead, correct? Yes. Or 60 cents. Okay. And then how, do, what kind of ads are you running and what kind of, you know, walk, walk us through your different campaigns and the difference between a campaign and an ad that you're still trying to teach me. For sure. And Armando jump in if, correct me if I'm wrong. The campaign yep. is basically what you want to capture. You can go for link clicks to your website to generate leads, to generate Facebook page likes. And within that campaign, you can run different sets of ads. So you can have one ad with a picture of a house and another ad with a picture of the team. But the main purpose of your campaign is like the goal. Are you wanting to get leads with this or are you wanting to drive people to your website? Yeah, that's exactly correct, uh, Kate. Yeah, and, and you know, some people with that, let's say if the traffic is going towards the their website, you know, some people create uh, uh, individual landing pages just, just for, you know, some, if you're trying to look for a lead form, you're definitely already collecting the information through that lead form. But some people, they're trying to, let's say, uh, they create a land specific landing page. So as soon as they go into their website, they fill out a form. And with that, they collect the information and, and, you know, they are already in your website. So it depends on what you're actually trying to do. If the visibility is website or, you know, calls, you can change to that as well, or even messenger on facebook too it depends it depends what you're trying to do the campaigns will will dictate what the objective is okay so let's put this put these in buckets so you could do a campaign to get likes to your your page mm -hmm. your yep. facebook page right and is do you guys recommend a business page or a personal page for something like this 
uh, eHash, eHash should, yeah, eHash should be a business page. Okay, so yeah. that's that may be different for some of our um, clients and team members here. You know, a lot of people are able to do really good business on social media through Facebook with their personal page, and this is not that, right? So you can go for likes. What other buckets? What 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 other buckets of campaigns can we um, write down? Lead you can you yeah lead generation yeah go ahead Kate sorry about that uh, lead yeah. generation brand awareness which is basically running people to your Facebook business page and I would like to touch if you're an agent that doesn't have a Facebook business page and only a personal page you can easily switch that to a business page and be able to run ads and not lose your yeah. following from that cool yeah it's it's okay. super super quick okay well um armando what's your overall with the businesses you're associated with what would you say a cost per lead is or an engagement uh, right for so i've been using mainly lead generation campaigns for uh, the real estate uh, uh uh called mastercraft residential down in california and it will depend with the uh, with the situation right now with the virus uh, leads has gone leads have gone much cheaper now, so it will depend on the budget and how you're creating that ad. It's about you know, rough. I've gotten you know below you know a dollar like eighty nine eighty five cents. Uh, I've had you know a dollar a dollar twenty, but if if your leads are coming in and costing you over over three dollars something must be wrong with the with the creation of of the ad that's good Let, and let's let's sidestep for a second how did you guys meet oh that's a that's a great question do you, you want to go <laughs> first yeah, kate sure. <laughs> no problem armando and i met we both work with a local investor here in eugene and this investor has new subdivisions that he is, has his hands in. So Armando is working with him on a subdivision in Southern California, and I'm here in Eugene. So we kind of collab That's, because marketers like to know other marketers' information. Yeah, we, we go exactly. back and forth. Good. I just wanted to throw that out there. It's, hey, whether it's in Southern California or Eugene or wherever, um, you're you're getting a focus and then you're building awareness around it. Kate's done amazing with uh, bringing attention to that subdivision. It's kind of got a life of its own after she took over and her and Armando applied some of the strategies that they're going to be touching on today. So I just want to show that. Go ahead, Kate. Yeah. So I wanted to jump into the benefits of running Facebook ads and being consistent on Facebook. So this year, $71 billion will be and on TV advertisements in America. And after this, Armando's done some great research that I'd like him to tell us about. Okay, so uh, going back to the consistency, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, going back to the consistency, it's basically, uh, let's talk about, you know, since right now, uh, one post a week, right you have 52 posts a year but then if you change to seven posts a week you have 364 posts a year so it's basically one one post a week will give you a million and 40 uh, uh reach a year instead of the seven posts a week you have seven a little bit over seven million reach a year if if the average reach is about twenty thousand, right so you will you that's how you're going to beat the algorithm that's just talking about you know growth organically that's 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 all it is so and that's basically what what uh instagram and facebook and all of the other platforms they, they're trying to to push us to do and with that you created something called momentum and and that's basically you will track individual user behavior so and and with that they display the content that they they like to consume. So niche right now that we're talking about is real estate. So if, if you're consistent with that, avoiding uh, uh, 
the bragging about yourself or about your business, about your brand, and constantly creating value to the audience, things are definitely going to grow naturally or organically as well. And then on top of that, you have the ads. So if you have, it's literally a momentum and a huge machine that you can create uh, with consistency on, on organic posts, taking advantage of every single feature that the platform will give you, will allow you to use. And, uh, and also on top of that, people will see the ads displaying. So it's gonna, you're basically gonna be all over the place showing what you do, showing what you're about throughout the platforms. That's, that's the main reason nowadays people are being super successful with the social media platforms. It's basically the increasing their visibility to their specific niche. Back in the days on a TV commercial, you'd pay loads of money for, you know, not even a targeted audience. And that's the beauty about social media nowadays. It's actually sometimes creepy with, you know, Facebook targeting and all the geo stuff that we can do nowadays. So that's, that's basically what it is. And with, uh, like Kate mentioned, it's all the TV advertisements are, are I think this year is going to be the last year that they're going to be investing on, on, on TV commercials by next year. It's going to be completely different. So it's like $71 billion invested on, on all the social media platforms. And, you know, it's, it's only going to come back in the days, you know, Facebook, Facebook bought Instagram and who knows what's going to happen. Now there's something huge happening on TikTok, right? With all the younger people, people, you know, it's, it's crazy how things are going. I feel like TVs were only going to go less and less and less. So that's, that's my, my intake on that. Well, and you, you mentioned Instagram. Do you run, are there, cam I know nothing about this. So, you know, sorry for the silly question, but do you run campaigns on Instagram too? Or how do those differ? Or how are they the same? And if you don't do it, is it worth doing? It's definitely worth doing because like I said, Facebook bought Instagram. So now it's basically the same platform. And when you're creating your ad, you have the chance to choose. Do you want to display this ad on Instagram? So might as well, as you're creating the ad, you, you select, yes, I do want to display this ad on Instagram because it's a lot more visibility. And what is the cost compared to Facebook? You won't change much the, the cost. You're just opening to another platform. Okay. Do you same message or do you rebrand it for a different audience? No, you rebrand it for you know, you can, you know, choose different, you know, image. It's it's a much younger audience that we have on, on Instagram. So you you're gonna have to play with the ad sets for sure. Okay. So you're being intentional about the actual message and placing the message as it pertains to, to that audience. Exactly. That's pretty yeah. smart. To each, okay. each individual audience. What I've noticed for Instagram ads, a big thing is as you're scrolling, because people are scrolling so fast on that, is it has to be a light and airy, bright picture. Um, a lot of times kitchens work perfect for this. And usually I just put a few keywords to be like, hey, on the photo itself. And you can do that within command as well. And that is so it catches their attention that it's like, hey, this is a little different than what I'm used to seeing from my friends' accounts posting that. Yeah, Facebook sometimes will tell you if there's a lot of text within the picture or too much going on, they will, they will warn you that your ad won't be displayed and won't get too much uh, uh, engagement and reach. So they, they kind of guide you through on that as well. Do you, do you guys have any ads that you can show us today that's of some of the different campaigns you're running? Yeah, I, let me go, let me go in here. And you know, while you're peeking at that, did you guys have mentioned consistency a couple times and, and when we met, it, out at lunch and then when we uh, talked a couple weeks ago on zoom that word had to be the one that was definitely said more than any other was consistency 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 so what is that did you i don't think you've covered that very specifically on this call but how 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 consistent how often and how often is too much 
So I, I would say there's, there's never, you can be as active as you can. And as, like I said, as long as if you're creating value to the people they're watching you, they won't get bored. They won't find you annoying. So it's, it's, which is tricky as well, right? Sometimes it could be too much if you're only talking about yourself. If you're, if you're basically bragging about yourself. It's the same thing when you're talking to someone. But if, if that person is constantly adding value to myself and I can look at their, at their page and I'm getting something out of it and improving myself with that, learning about something new, that's going to be the game. And, and you can definitely, you know, up to once or twice daily, in the long run, things are only gonna gonna grow. So, and and the cons the consistency the consistency again is more towards the the algorithm. So, the more the consistent you are, the more Instagram will show you first. You're gonna come up first for your specific audience. So, you're gonna be able to display yourself on the explore page. That again, it doesn't cost you anything. You're you're just showing up more frequently the more consistent you are. And th that right there has got to be a challenge. I mean, being in coaching and also being an agent and in the trenches every day, just showing up to do something once a day at the same time can be difficult. So, um, I mean, any recommendations for a busy agent that, that doesn't currently do this, but sees the value in it? Of course. Uh, uh, sorry, go ahead, Armando. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, Kate. A big thing that I do is I calendar block every Monday about an hour to an hour and a half. And I go through and I schedule posts for Facebook and Instagram to go out automatically throughout the week. And I usually do one a day. A lot of times there's like two a day for if you get a good review or something like that. Um, when I'm choosing those posts, of course, I have to be thinking, where when are they going to see this because when you schedule the post you schedule a time like is this going to be something someone wants to see before they go to work at 6 30. is this something they want to see right before dinner is it too controversial is it is it pleasing to the eye so those are just some good tips to just sit down on a monday and schedule this next seven days and to really get into a habit of doing that okay so before we look at a couple sample ads um, what I'm hearing is you spend an hour to two hours a week to set ads up. That is to set the Facebook posts that are not ads. Okay. That is separately to help with your consistency for your database and whoever sees you on social media. Now for the ads, that is another calendar block, which usually takes about 30 minutes to an hour. And that is weekly. Again, it's done on Monday. I go in, I change the photo, I change some of the wordings, I add emojis to the title. Um, a lot of times they have subtitles that are in bold on your photo. And those are very important to keep those short, sweet, and very inform informative. And yeah. <laughs> Like right now, I'll show you on one of my We make up words here at the Josh Kelly team. It's fine. It keeps us on it's our fine. It's normal. It's fine. Is new construction, and then the subtitle is made to fit you. That's awesome. So three hours a week between campaigns and ads-ish. And then how much is our spend? Um, right now, our spend is $6 on a daily budget. And weekly with that in our demographic, we've been getting two to three leads a day. So let's just go with the low number, two leads a day, $6 a day. So that's basically $3 a lead? Yeah. Okay. And then really even out over time, because some days you can get up to four. It just depends on what you're targeting. If you have too many demographics that you're trying to target or too many or too wide of a service area, if you have like Eugene, Springfield, Vanita, then you're stretching your dollar really too thin. So I would try that's, to- that, That's a great point, Kate. That's definitely a great point. Especially depending on the budget that you have. The bigger your budget, the more you're able to, to increase that visibility, but the smaller the budget, you try to, to pinpoint a little bit more instead of increasing the whole, in terms of location, trying to go all over the place. So we've got people from all over the country here 
that, I mean, they don't know where Vanita or Springfield or Eugene is. So Eugene and Springfield are connected cities. Uh, I-5, Interstate 5 separates them, but it's basically one city. Um, or, you know, there's no space in between. Vanita is about 10 miles away from Eugene. So in, if we're going to talk about pinpoint, I don't know what pinpoint means. Is that 5,000 people? Is that 10,000 people? Is it a 10-mile swath? Like, help me make sense of that. I stick with a 15 mile radius from where I am okay. for our budget. Again, if your budget is more, you can advance that, but there's really no need to if your budget's small. Okay. Yeah, yeah, 15 is enough. So, also, well, and we'll cover this. So, as we put this class together and, and, and really think about different concepts and ideas and, and like a workshop for each class. Um, it sounds to me like you guys actually have a formula, whether you've written it down or you're using it. I'm hearing a, an actual formula to do this. Am I, mm -hmm. is that correct? That's definitely correct. Yeah, there's, there's, you know, when we talk about this, it may seem like, okay, that's, oh, yeah, it's super easy. But no, there's, you know, setting up the ads, you know, creating the content. And sometimes what could help us, though, instead of wasting your time creating the content, especially for a, a real estate agent, you know, document your journey, you know, just, just it, there's a guy named Gary V. Most of you know him and, and he's definitely, he, he's always consistently talking about this. People waste too much time on thinking about creating content and, and what's actually much easier for you to document your journey, your daily, your, what you do daily at work, what you've been doing, things that you've learned in the real estate uh, uh, um, world, that's, that's, much, that's gonna speed up that process to, to create content as well. Very good. Okay, do we have some uh, sample ads? We yeah, I'm, I'm, so I, I'm pulling up here. Okay, do you have something? I do, let me get to that point. This um, is exciting for me, I get to see our ads. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All righty. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So within Ads Manager, which is really what you want to work on, you don't want to work on the ad center through Facebook. So you want to go to facebook.com slash ads manager and kind of set up your account through there. Again, you have to have a business account to do this. This is one of our ads that I run strictly for website traffic to our subdivision. Um, you can't see here, but there's about two other photos right here that kind of move in a um, kind of crescent moon shape. And here you see these headings that are new construction made to fit you. This is genuinely what people see right after the photo. So it goes photo, this, and then they're going to look up here. Um, this learn more links directly to our website and within ads manager it tracks how many web links and stuff like that happens and i'll show you our lead gen one real quick and this is our lead generation one um, this learn more button prompts it to a form that says this Josh Cooley team will be in contact with you shortly, name, phone number, email, and they have an option to give us a little message. Again, I put in uniquely made to fit you because in new construction, that's very important. And then down here, I fit in one of Eugene's newest, and then it kind of cuts off at neighborhood, but they get the point. Very cool. Good work. Thank you. Nice. Did you have anything, Ramondo? Yeah, I'm pulling up the June. Uh, let me screen share here. Okay, can you can you see my my no. screen here? No. Nope. Uh, okay. What about now? I see me. 
Yes. Is that going out? Yes. Okay, so let me pull up this one. So that's the June one. So basically, let's go into the actual creation here. So it's going to go loading, loading, loading. So over here, you have the, the budget. You know, this one is quite big. Uh, it's going to end at the end of the at the month. And uh, with that kind of budget, I've been trying to explore as much as I can to see the best results in here. As you guys can see, there's a bunch. Uh, and the interest I've been changing in a weekly basis as well. So with this one is about, you know, 13 to 42 uh, leads daily, okay, that we've been getting. And that's the amount of reach, as you guys can see here. And again, this, uh, a bigger budget that I'm working with. And uh, what I try to do and Facebook allowed me to do, not decreasing the amount of uh, reach engagement was this here. Very cool. So I'm gonna show you. So over here, as you can see, Josh and everyone else, uh, the identity here you have your Facebook page and your Instagram account and you just select. Okay, and then the placements here will be, that's what I'm working with here, let me see. Yeah, so it's basically a carousel and each individual uh, picture will have something about the, the house. So you have, you know, the Mastercraft collection at Highland and four bedrooms and, you know, gourmet kitchen and stuff like that. And then over here is the primary text. It's two more homes should be sold almost there out of 43 homes. So we're almost close to being done with that project. And then the call to action, I see that I get the most results with Learn More instead of pushing people to sign up or, or call now or something like that. Learn more will get you a little bit more uh, interest as well with, uh, with the ad. So that's basically, that's basically it here. So over here you have the Facebook feeds and Instagram feed, how it's gonna display for both. Okay. So this one here has about, uh, let me see, about eight different pictures in a carousel. So you just slide uh, sideways and it's gonna show you all the different uh, images too. Awesome. I've got a question for later and I, anyone else, if you, you can text me, um, or send a note here or chat with me, if you want me to ask anything, if you're muted or feel free to unmute yourself and ask, um, I do have a couple questions that have come in. Um, so how are we doing on time? We're good. So how will this make you successful? Is that something that we talked about? Of course. Um, the main things that I've seen from being successful with using social media and using the ads is you're basically becoming top of mind in a family household. People are on social media when they're out at dinner, when they're at home with their friends and family. So people are sh turning around their phone and saying, look at this way more often, especially during these times than before. Um, low cost leads, that's a very big benefit of using Facebook and Instagram for leads. Also, the fact that you can do that in-house is a huge advantage. I know a lot of agents outsource for Google AdWords and even Facebook ads, but this is totally something that someone is trainable to do in-house. That's right. And it, there's accountability and, and you have the numbers to track, right? So obviously I'm big on tracking. If you pay someone else to do just Google ads for you, some, you know, there's like a 10% fee um, for most of those companies. So if you spend $2,000 a month, there's 200 of it that's just going to them to manage it, then you don't always get really accurate data on what ads they're placing, what ads are working. There's really nothing for you to do except pay 
and pray that leads come in that are quality, right? So this definitely lets you take your brand and how you want to run your business to the consumer you're looking for, and then you get real-time data. What are they looking at? What kind of leads are you producing? So um, Exactly. A lot of times, if you don't have someone doing it in-house that I've noticed is I've taken and I've reduced the budget significantly, and we've received the same amount of leads. So you don't really have someone on the inside being like, hey, we're spending too much or we're spending too little because if you outsource in the end game, if there's not a personal relationship there, it is what it is. Are you, you're talking about our relationship with uh, Sync? Yes. Okay, it is what it is. We got, um, our, our agents came to us and, and when we were looking at conversion rates and literally said, we need less leads. So I don't know if that's testimony to the, a great job Kate's doing because um, she is but interesting they literally said we're getting too many leads we're not following up because if we're gonna get leads we're gonna follow up with them right that's just it's an agreement and it's the culture of our team so we went from like two thousand dollars a month to a thousand dollars a month in in spend and I believe we had the same amount of leads come through AdWords and then we did it again aren't we down to like 600 or I don't even down to 600 and honestly I have not noticed a giant difference I think on the over weeks we're about 10 down but then it shoots right back up the next week so that's just how the traffic is so that's that is something that burnt me a little bit and it's like all right we need to do more with social media because it's trackable and, and we can control it and pull levers if we need to if we need to grow or slow down we can be in charge of that but just wanted to share that tidbit good deal um so a question that came in is what if if you're a single agent and we'll ask this for a team as well but if you're just an agent without a big team and i don't want to say just an agent that's terrible um what do you do first is there one thing that you would focus on and get good at uh, i would say you know first you know if you do not have any any social media platform go ahead and create it you know just just go ahead and create it right without mm -hmm. that you you won't be able to succeed but i would say try to do a, a, a marketing research and see where your audience is what are the people that you usually work with you know what are the people they're actually looking for you and once you know that, once you know that target target audience, you you let's say you know 35, 40 and over, okay, start with Facebook right now. If you see more millennials like me or younger population, go ahead and create your Instagram account, and and then you get things going. But I would say do a marketing research, see who you're dealing with first, so then you can see which platforms they're in. Fair enough, Kate. What do you think? I think what I've seen people struggle a lot with is consistency. And that's why we touched a lot about that today. My first thing would be to get your account to a business account. If it is not already, which you can do with both Facebook and Instagram and set that calendar block for Monday morning and just power through Monday through Sunday post one to two posts a day. Remember to bring value, um, bring fun for ours. One, one day on our, schedule is I just write a joke or I try to create engagement, which in turn brings up your page to other people. For example, I ran a poll. Are you a dog or a cat person? This week, our scheduled poll is what emoji do you use most? And that the simple, pure, happy things are what people want to see during a time like this. And it's what people are going to share and reply to. So true. Yep. Good job, Kate. <laughs> All right. Um, the, what was that? I was just going to say, what's, what's the next slide? But you go for it. One of the questions that I got before we started the class is what tools do we use to advertise uh, listings on Facebook or Instagram? One of the big tools that I've been using is Listing Booster. And here's kind of an example for those that don't know what this is. This goes on top of your sign and it's a text code. And we have a virtual tour that when you text this, we get your phone number, your name, your email, and in turn, you get to view this property's 
website that Listing Booster generates. So this is a very time effective marketing tool to use. I use it in Craigslist posts, I use it in Instagram, Facebook posts, and of course we get a lot of more sign calls and registrations using this. Because instead of picking up your phone and calling an agent, if you don't have an agent already, and that can be daunting to some people, you can just text and get this virtual tour. That's really that's cool. a great ad. So that's super cool. And then and you know if you if you have an or business, you're probably in trouble. And what I mean by that is, um, most of the time there's an and there's you can do a couple of different things. You don't have to do just one. And so the and is we've used those text writers for a decade, right? There used to be a, an IVR integrated voice recording. You could call a, a, a 1-800 number and you could leave a message on it that said, this is a three bedroom, two bath, 1700 square foot house, blah, 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 everything but the price. So that, you know, you can engage them and then you would get uh, a phone number when, when they call in that number. And when they text in, you get a phone number, which is a lead source. So we're using an and. We're using some old technology and some old lead generation. We're just changing the delivery method, right? Because not those sign writers aren't bringing in as many leads as they used to. And we used to put those codes uh, for Listing Booster in Craigslist. And what was it, five or six years ago, Craigslist said that you couldn't do the hyperlinks anymore and take people out of Craigslist. So we, we lost a lot of leads like that. So it's cool to see that we're still able to use some of the tips and tricks and strategies from the past, just with a different vehicle. And that's how I see social media, right? It's just a different way to get your message out. And then it's uh -huh. how. how, how do we do it? And that's what you guys are you know, touching on today. Yeah, that's really yeah. What be most cost effective too, is looking at what you have and creating something to put that into something way more proficient. Yeah, that's a great point, Josh. That's, that's definitely one of the reasons social media is, is super important nowadays. It's, it's literally to increase your, your, your visibility and, and your journey, your story, what you do and the way you do it, the reason why you do it. That's, that's definitely a good point. Right, and I mean, you guys do that. You literally have roles that take this seriously and are operating at massively successful levels. Like, you know, we, we give these numbers out and it's like, yeah, 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 right? No, 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 this is very real. When your team comes to you and says, we're getting too many leads, something's working, right? The <laughs> difference is, I see a lot of people on social media saying, I just listed a home or yay me or just silly. And it's not a consistent, it's not actually marketing. It's not professional. It's just talking. And so this is taking, like Armando said, know your audience. You are creating ads to a specific person or demographic. And there's a lot to it. So it's, are you using it just to use it because you're on Facebook and Instagram or are you actually putting a campaign in the structure behind it that's allowing you to get get real good actual leads you know and I know in command you can go in uh, with Keller Williams and just put ten dollars and make an ad and go and I hear about people all the time just randomly doing that but what word isn't that consistency consistent right exactly yeah and a lot of times we run our ads in a month period and just change the ad week by week and that gives it the consistency that gives it so you don't have duplicate entries um when i first started doing ads on facebook just at the base of my knowledge i just ran them week by week creating a different ad and a different campaign every week and i'd have the same leads come in and i'm paying for the same leads and i remember mm -hmm. And we had a realtor who just kept clicking on it and so that, sometimes that happens but you can avoid that by keeping the same campaign going and just editing your ad Mark. okay is there another slide to hit up i believe so let me share my screen real quick Now, while you're bringing that up, or did I freeze? 
or did Kate freeze? Mm, Kate, you there? I hear the door open. So here's a question. Um, Coming on in. Hello. There we My go. computer decided to take a poop. Okay, well that's terrible. Um, <laughs> we've got a question um, from Jeremiah, and he's wondering if you guys could talk about or talk to the audience at the audience generation and audience keywords that are having the highest return on investment. Yeah. So a lot of times this is going to be your interest within the ads manager. So a lot of interest that I like to use with our budget being so small as I use one a week and I get good return of investment on house hunting, Zillow, Trulia, first time home buyers. Um, and I believe Armando has a specific set that he uses as well. Yeah, usually when I first started, especially if it's uh, real estate related, you know, I just, my only targeting will be real estate. And then as we go, I, I change to basically the ones that you just mentioned, uh, Kate, Zillow, Truly, Homes.com, all of that kind of stuff. First time uh, uh, buyer, yeah, real estate investment as well. So that's basically... And again, like you mentioned, the keeping it fresh, updating weekly by weekly to see the, the results that we, you get. Eventually, you're going to find exactly what you need to target. So then you're going to get the most out of it instead of just searching and going for, you know, many different targeting. And that also needs to be um, changed per your ad. So if you're looking to targeting refinancing, then I see a lot of people liking to use mortgage calculator or refinancing course or just mortgage. That's a good point. So we got another question that says, would you change the audience criteria for different campaigns like brand awareness versus listings? Yes. I, for brand awareness, I go for a much larger criteria, a more basic, because I just want people to like my page, or I just want people to click on my website. To get listings, you want to target more of a neighborhood that you're looking at. Um, with Facebook, obviously, you can't target age, but you can target things like interest. Um, a good one I would pick honestly for that is Zillow because a lot of people go to Zillow for the Zestimate. So either Zestimate or Zillow. And then if they search on that, your ad's gonna pop up. Yeah, that's 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 basically it, Kate. That's that's a good point. Well, sweet, let me see if I can get the slide pulled up on Josh's screen. Okay. And if you guys had any other questions, feel free to send that to the inbox. It's always weird when you go on someone else's computer to find stuff. <laughs> Sweet. All righty, here is our slide. We'll click to the end. And this is kind of our end game. Just feel free to take a picture of this. So what you wanna do to be successful is decide where to focus. What are you wanting to do? Brand awareness send people to your website, leads. If you're going with leads, what type of leads are you wanting to get? Buyers, sellers, refinancing. Then decide, that's basically deciding what your niche is and focusing on who you wanna reach. So when you want to start designing your con content, 
remember to make it light, airy, and pleasing. A few words, if at all, that you put into your image, and then staying consistent. Armando, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, just basically use that platform just as a billboard, you know, just, just, you know, that's, that's mainly the, the reason to have it and create the ads for, and with that, you're going to make, you know, that's so appetizing to the prospect that they will want to contact you. They want to be in contact with you. They want to buy from you. They want relationship with you, but, but that's it. That's basically what you just mentioned. And it's, yeah. and it's everything needs to be specifically for, you know, the service that you want to sell. So that's, that's basically how you should be guiding your ads towards. Yeah. And then not being successful and we've all made these mistakes and you're learning, but spreading your ad too thin, targeting too many cities or too many interests not targeting an area, which is kind of the opposite. Um, Facebook on some people's accounts will just target all of United States and your ad will be going and you're going to be excited. You're getting so many leads in for what you're spending. And then you pick up the phone to call them and you find out they're in Tennessee and have no idea where Eugene is. So that's something to keep an eye on and then obviously not staying consistent or having the excuse of taking your ads down during the off season. Yep. Cool. I think that that covers all right. it all. Huh? Yeah. We'll bring Josh back in here. I'm allowed. <laughs> All right, everybody, uh, if it looks like chat's clear, so questions are answered. Um, if you think of anything after the fact, I see Andrea's on here uh, with Rieger Coaching. Um, you can email me, josh at riegercoaching.com or andrea at riegercoaching.com. Um, and we want to know if you have any questions after the fact. Generally, you, you come in, you hear this information and you start going and then you're probably gonna hit a roadblock because you realize you didn't get everything. And so we're here to help with that. So um, thank you all for showing up and have a great Friday. Thank you, Armando. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Oh, thank you everyone.